Today marks the 70th anniversary of the formation of the modern Commonwealth. Last year, the Prince of Wales was appointed the Queen's designated successor, but what does the future hold for the organisation? Now, joining us now is the Commonwealth Secretary General, Patricia Scotland. Good morning Good to morning. you. Good morning. Um, often, you, I, we've, we said the modern Commonwealth, um, and I suppose it's an, an apt name because sometimes you just think, what's the point of the Commonwealth? Well, it feels quite, quite, you know, old fashioned. Well, actually, the. Empirical. The uh, Commonwealth is the reverse of that, because what you've had is you've got 53 countries who used to be in an alignment saying we still want to be together. And why do we want to be together? Because we come from six different regions. It's 2.4 billion people. That's one third of the world's population. 60% of them are under the age of 30. And so it's a very modern, young organisation. But they have the same values. We have the same values. What's the point, though? You can, you, can, you can say you all agree with the same values, but what's the, point, what's the advantage of being part of the Commonwealth? It's because of what we do. So we looked, we asked that very same question in 2015. What's this all about? And they came up with the fact that it's 19% cheaper, easier doing business together because we've got the same laws, we've got the same structures, and we've been used to doing it. And also new countries are joining us. So Mozambique, who tragically today has just been hit by uh, a hurricane, yeah, hurricane. Um, has joined us, but they were never part of the old British Empire. So has Rwanda, who joined in 2009. And why have they joined us? Because they're attracted by those values, by that commonality, and the fact that we do better uh, we support the rule of law, we're better in terms of governance, and we are pooling our knowledge and our expertise. It was the Commonwealth in 1989 who said we are facing an existential threat from climate change, long before everyone else. Why was that? Because 31 of our members are small states, and they know, and they feel it, and they taste it every day. So we're looking together on cybercrime, on communication, on connectivity. And last year, when 53 leaders came to the UK, when, if you remember, very few multilateral organisations could agree on anything, 53 countries from one third of the world came to London and we agreed on everything. We saw a moment ago uh, some of the more senior royals who, who, are, who people were automatically link with the Commonwealth. Of course, yeah. the Queen, uh, Prince Charles, yeah. we, Prince of Wales, mentioned as well. Yeah. What about the younger members of the royal family, and, and specifically Duke and Duchess of Sussex? This uh, suggestion that maybe they will spend some time in Africa, for example, uh, after their baby is born. I mean, what, do you see that couple particularly having, having a significant part to play moving forward? Well, absolutely, because the Queen also uh, appointed uh, Prince Harry as being like the youth ambassador uh, for the Commonwealth. When you've got 60% of the whole Commonwealth under the age of 30, we've really got to speak to them, and they are really connected. But it's the whole royal family who are doing things. Uh, for instance, the Princess Royal has done a fantastic job in relation to... Uh, uh, agriculture, but also common purpose, which brings slightly older professionals, maybe just over 30. Um, uh, Prince Charles has done for the last 40 years things on climate change and sustainability. So that commitment is a whole family commitment. But then the whole Commonwealth are committed to each other too, and they're doing great things. Good to see you here this morning. Thanks thank for thank getting up so early much. for us and being on the here this morning. Baroness Scotland, thank you.